What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now, Back to the Past. I'm Alex, and in this video, I thought we'd look back at Marvel's Spider-Man 2018 again, but this time, kind of tell a story, and tell a story about how this really proved that the Arkham games were not a fluke. This continued to push superhero games out there, and I also just kind of want to talk about the massive success that this game was. I mean, you look back at articles from back in 2018, and this is kind of where I want to start the story. This game has sold phenomenally well, right? And it's gotten remastered. It's gotten, obviously, Miles Morales in addition to it, and I think as a franchise total, 33 plus million units, obviously with Spider-Man 2 right around the corner. This thing's going to hit, you know, 50 million, I assume, uh, sometime in 2024. It's absolutely massive, and you think to how much it sold and how many PS4s it sold. So you look back, back in 2018, and the game sold 9 million units in just about a two-month window, which is actually kind of insane. Uh, we've seen Sony games of the past. God of War, Horizon, Last of Us, as being games that maybe start really, really strong. And yeah, they do incredibly well. This game not only started strong, it continued strong, and it never really let up for kind of years. Same thing actually happened with Miles Morales when that game came out. It did pretty good, not as good as I think some people thought it was going to do, but that game just kept chugging along, and in my opinion, really sold PS5. People were waiting to get that game until they got a PS5. Once they got the PS5, they got Miles. I think it was a little bit of a mix with Spider-Man 2018 where many people already had PS4s. I think by the end of that two-month kind of cycle of Spider-Man, the PS4s had sold 91.6 million units. And in that time frame from September to November 25th, 2018, there were 5.6 million PS4s sold. And now, again, remember, 9 million copies of Spider-Man, 5.6 million PS4s sold in that time. Obviously, there were bundles and there were probably discounts of Black Friday and whatnot, but the game did insanely well, and in my opinion, it really, really helped the PS4, which didn't really need it all that much. You know, you think of the massive lead that PlayStation had in the in the console warrior kind of thing back then over Xbox. It's really no debate, right, of how much PS4 outsold Xbox One. This game was just another thing that came out that did absolutely incredible, but I think it moved PS4s. It obviously moved itself, and also then think about, okay, well, they had a chance Microsoft had a chance for this game they said no to it you had Insomniac kind of being in limbo for so long right and obviously they had made the Resistance franchise one of my all-time favorite franchises moved over to do Sunset Overdrive where I think they learned a lot of their just craft that they then used in Spider-Man they were under Xbox during that time and then obviously Sony buys them at a massive massive discount rate and Spider-Man comes out so you know that's kind of a little bit of the story of releasing and in terms of how well it did right the sales. But another thing I want to talk about is the actual game itself and the superhero genre. So, I mean, I remember 2018 really wasn't all that long ago, but how about we go back to Batman Arkham Asylum? And I can actually attest to this. I mean, I was obviously younger, as I'm sure many people were, but, you know, I wasn't in the gaming journalist kind of movement. I, I didn't know too much about games, but I did know enough to think that, okay, Batman Arkham Asylum changed so much. And even though it didn't sell 20, 30, 40 million units, it wasn't a Red Dead Redemption, it wasn't a Call of Duty game, it wasn't these things. What it did for for the entire genre can't really be oversaid, right? Before then, obviously, we kind of had some hit or misses. There were some great superhero games before. There were a lot of terrible ones, but also ones that took it very seriously and not only would have considered themselves to be a superhero game, but also just a game in general, right? Batman Arkham Asylum was a game of the year kind of contender. It's a really, really good game. It's not only a really good superhero game, but it kind of transcends that to just become, okay, well, it is a superhero game, but it's taking itself seriously. It's telling kind of an original story. It's got Kevin Conroy, but it, obviously it's using source material at least a little bit and it's doing an incredible job the game plays great the visuals were fantastic the stealth was great everything about that game in my opinion it was really really good and that changed things that said okay well we can now do that but the issue is after arkham you know asylum we had city we had origins we had night Batman was still for quite a while, even during that time, looked at as, well, these are really the only guys that are capable of doing something like this. Now, again, there were other games and maybe different kinds of genres that were happening. I mean, you even had Mortal Kombat versus DC. I don't know what necessarily kind of, oh, well, it's a fighting genre, but you have the Mortal Kombat side, you have DC. Is that a superhero game? Is it a superhero fighting game? Whatever you want to call it. There were other examples for sure of games doing well, but we never had, I guess, in a way, a duplicate of Arkham Asylum, not necessarily to downgrade Spider-Man. 
Sailor Man to just saying, okay, well, this is literally Arkham Asylum 2.0. I think that's what kind of made it so special is it did multiple things. It came out. It did incredibly well. It proved that we can do this kind of again, but switching things up. You had Spider-Man come out and it sold very well and it proved that, well, we can not only make a good game, but we can make a game that is heavily inspired by the Arkham games. There are some things that are obviously not exactly the same. We can do it with a different superhero. It doesn't have to be rock steady. It could be a different studio altogether and they'll sell. And it's again, another example of, it's not just a great superhero game. It's a great game just in general. Now, again, a lot of things I think were borrowed over. Obviously, the free flow combat of the Arkham games have become a staple in the industry. It's hard to kind of get away from that. And then you can kind of connect the dots to say, well, when was the first time this all happened? Arkham Asylum is really when it was put together, right? And then all the games kind of took from it. But Spider-Man is different, right? So instead of certain ways of traversing with Batman, obviously with Spider-Man, you're swinging around. Um, in some ways, I think Spider-Man is better than the Arkham franchise. And in other ways, I think the Arkham franchise is better than Spider-Man, but that's kind of, I don't want to pit the two against each other. The point of this video is really saying it's possible to constantly be doing this. I don't know if you need them like once a year or, you know, every year and a half or two years, but you can make these big open world games that are using source material that also maybe you're telling their own unique story. A similarity, I guess, between them as well is they're kind of experienced, right? So when you think of Batman and the Arkham universe, obviously he's been doing it a while. This Spider-Man, I think seven or eight years in the first game. So he had been doing it for a while. So there's plenty of similarities. Stealth, although stealth is obviously a little bit different. Combat, attention to lore or characters. There's a lot there. And I think it was really important that Spider-Man happened because all Ultimately, I think Batman Arkham Asylum is always going to be looked at as the most influential of all of these games. But Spider-Man, I also think, too, did something really massive where you look at Miles. I don't think Miles happens without Spider-Man doing really well. I don't know if sequels happens without, you know, Spider-Man doing well. But not just that. Wolverine, I don't think that happens. I don't think what we're seeing now with EA doing Iron Man and doing Black Panther and the Amy Henning game with the Captain America Black Panther. All these games I really don't think happen because some of them are going to be open world, right? Actually, the Iron Man game is, is said to be open world. Black Panther game from EA is said to be open world, almost like an RPG-like thing. Amy Henning's game will be a little bit more like Uncharted, right? So like third-person action-y, Uncharted-like game. They're not all going to be the same. Some of them will, I bet, be relatively close to Spider-Man. And you can, I mean, firstly, you can trace it all the way back to Arkham Asylum. But secondly, Spider-Man kind of proves, I think, in, a, in this way, more than Batman, that not only can you do this but you can do it more than once you can do it with something slightly different see again that's something that it's no fault to the arkham games but that's something you really couldn't do there right you could say oh my god this is finally a game that transcends that like little tagline that it has where it's a superhero you know genre game it's not just that but it's a great game it did that and it made many many marks on the industry but spider-man coming in i think proved to the rest of the industry that okay not only did the Arkham franchise or formula, not only has it been proven to work by them, we'll do it, we'll make it work, and we'll make it work with a different character. I mean, Marvel versus DC, I suppose, but literally we're just do a different character. You obviously have to breathe your own life into it, and Spider-Man's going to be different than Iron Man, which is going to be different than Batman, but it can work. And then what did Spider-Man then do? It then proved to EA, obviously, who picked up on it. Now, that's not going to stop the Marvel Avengers of the worlds, you know, from happening. Happening, but it gets you these Black Panther games eventually. It maybe even influenced the idea to do Guardians of the Galaxy. Again, very much more linear story. I actually think Guardians of the Galaxy is a phenomenal, and this is the Eidos Montreal one. Super, super good game of the year contender for sure. Again, I don't know if you get half, if any of these games, if not only Arkham, which really sets the stage for everything, but then Spider-Man comes in to say, we can do it, and we can do it with a second superhero. We can actually make this work. It sold PS4s. You could argue argue console war stuff but it did extremely well it did everything that you could possibly hope for it to do it started a franchise of its own so now you get the sequel and i'm sure they'll make it a trilogy but then it also allows that you can kind of branch off and do many many other superhero games not just from sony although sony's obviously taking notice right because of wolverine who knows when insomniac maybe makes next maybe there's other superheroes kind of on the docket and it does deserve it because as i've said in the past video actually i did on this channel it is a really good game i don't think it's as good as i 
I remembered it being, okay? I definitely remembered it being slightly above where it is now, but the game is super, super good, and whether I have gripes with, the, with you know certain parts of the story or pacing or whatever, ultimately, it did exactly what it needed to do, and I'm very thankful for it because I want a world, and hopefully DC takes notice too and says, for the love of God, why haven't we been doing more Arkham stuff? We, we then did uh, Gotham Knights. We then did Suicide Squad, Kill a Justice League, Wonder Woman, probably getting back to the roots of what the Arkham universe kind of is. So hopefully they're picking up on it too and saying, well, we started this. Spider-Man's almost kind of ending it, but we can keep going. So while, you know, obviously, again, EA of the worlds and all them, they're doing more superhero games, maybe we jump back into the DC side and maybe we do more kind of inspired from Arkham. Hopefully... It's a win-win across the board. It doesn't matter Marvel versus DC, any of that garbage. It's literally, you're going to get more superhero games. And ultimately, two games kind of did it. It's it's because of Arkham Asylum that started everything, and that's because of Spider-Man for kind of showing the world that it works more than once. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on so you know all these videos go up. And I hope to see you all on the next one.